Welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and it is San Diego Comic Con convention season once again for 2021 with their Comic Con Special Edition. Very interesting Comic Con this year, of course, being in November, that's one thing, it usually takes place during the summer. It was nice to go, it was incredibly empty, it was almost refreshing to that sense, but there wasn't a whole heck of a lot going on, which has both good and bad merits in that sense so there wasn't too much to really talk about but we'll go ahead and explore what they had on the show floor all the great stuff all the toys everything on display and we'll kind of go through some of the booths at the very end and uh, look at vintage toys try to buy something you know it gets to that point where it's few and far between these days with stuff that you need for your collections. And what I'll do is I'll play music throughout and kind of join in every once in a while to kind of go over the highlights that I really enjoyed from the convention. So this will be fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at San Diego Comic-Con 2021 Special Edition. Now, most of you know, yeah, Marvel Zombies is one of my favorite properties, and I'm so stoked to see it starting to return in many facets. Now, these are more like game tokens, and they didn't really go over too much, but they're going to be doing a Kickstarter for this company. These statues of Galactus, and let's say this Cthulhu and everything, are giant on display, really show the details and everything else, so they're scaled up models but most of them will end up being very small pieces which you'll see coming up but the details on this giant lovecraftian monster was really cool to see and it wasn't behind glass which is another great thing because a lot of the lights and everything will distort photos this you get to see it straight up close and i mean there's this big cthulhu butt right there all the pimply eyes or whatever the sucker things are it's very cool they did a great job on that i mean it's been awesome as an action figure i'll tell you that the Galactus zombie is amazing. Just, I would love to just have this. Of course, could you imagine how it would be articulated, painted? These aren't normally articulated. Like I said, they're going to be really small tokens as they really do turn out to be. But just in seeing this in all its exquisite detail is something to behold. It really is awesome. It's almost like Marvel Zombies Resurrection in a way. And then also this statue of Galactus, which he's holding the Silver Surfer, doing the whole behold thing. But yeah, just the base itself, everything else, very, very cool to see. And they just did an exquisite job on this. Very enjoyable. And again, for those of you wondering, these are usually the size that these come out. They're very, very tiny, almost like Monopoly, we'll just say, type pieces in a sense, but incredibly detailed, of which I understand that some of them you end up kind of painting yourself as well. But you can see just as small as they are, they hold so much detail. I welcome any new Marvel Zombies figures. Now, I did stop by the 3-0 booth, which they had quite the booth, quite the setup, both with basically a portfolio on display of prior sold out figures that they do. They had a bunch of these Transformers, like Transformers, Bumblebee, they had them on pre-order. They are fantastic looking toys. I wouldn't, I don't have anything from 3-0, but it was definitely one of the highlights of this 
Comic-Con. They also had this really cool looking Iron Man, of course. It's a different change of pace from seeing the normal sort of Marvel Legends figure to this, of course, more premium. Premium to the 10th degree, you know, more expensive uh, would be the uh, key phrase here. But nonetheless, I mean, they did a fantastic job with one, again, the booth setup and just the look of all these figures, gorgeously rendered, gorgeously painted. So it is a lot of fun to see these. And I especially like seeing concept art like these for Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. The Power Rangers, it seems like there is such an explosion of Power Ranger merchandise uh, after Hasbro bought the the license and 3.0 is actually licensing from Hasbro to produce these. Of course, these are more in that one sixth sort of scale. They're a lot bigger type figures, but the detail and the looks of these things are quite amazing. I gotta give it to them all day. I mean, just down to the costumes and everything else. They're very shiny material, cloth, the weapons, gorgeously detailed. Very nice looking Kimberly Pink Ranger right here. So they did have a few new ones, quote unquote, on display. I believe ones that they had hinted at, but really nice to see them now on display at Comic-Con with this Ranger Slayer, which out of everything that's new for Power Rangers, this Ranger Slayer, just the look of her and how she, the, the costume for her, her bow, an evil Kimberly, there's something very appealing about that. So definitely cool. Then they also had the Lord Dracon figure. He looks okay. I, I just thought it was kind of a, a funny pose that he had uh, going on. But again, gorgeously detailed, gorgeously rendered. And then of course you had the White Ranger and Saba. So can't go wrong with the uh, White Ranger, Green Ranger, Tommy. Tommy basically makes up the Power Rangers in every sense, right? Everything is a, a Tommy these days. Now, while I'm not a huge fan of The Walking Dead anymore, I, I love the first season of that show. I really did, uh, especially the first episode. But seeing Michonne and her two walkers and how they, they look real, you know, it's I could imagine this on my shelf. I mean, I think that they did a fantastic job there. However I feel about the show, you know, you can always look at a cool looking action figure uh, and go, oh, you know, I mean, they rocked that at least. And they had a lot of the other characters on display, Morgan and poor Glenn, Maggie. <laughs> That all, I think that's where I kind of like dropped out of the show after that whole Negan thing. I was just like, nah. And plus the show didn't really turn out that great, to be honest with you. It kept kind of going downhill more and more and more less believable in, a, in an otherwise very believable zombie apocalypse. I know, right? But uh, yeah, it just, it didn't have that element that I was looking for anymore. The comics undoubtedly always did it so much better. Now this, out of everything that 3.0 had, this is what I was like, this is like zeroed in. This is their X-Files. I've never seen them up close before. So you had David Duchovny, Mulder, and you have Jillian Anderson's uh, Scully. And I mean, they look fantastic. I still have all the McFarlane toys ones. I think I'm gonna pull those out. I think for 2022, let's get some X-Files going I think for uh, retro shows I have them all I, I well I take that back I don't have the fluke man because I found out about fluke man later on for some reason so I gotta get fluke well, I get fluke man and we'll do the uh, the video but my god these things looked amazing I tell you what out of all these I would not mind having either of these so if 3-0 ever goes back and uh, makes these again <laughs> I think I might have to have these I was a huge fan of the x-files This is another show where I, I really liked, uh, and in the subsequent spinoffs too, you know, you had the, uh, what, the El Camino, and then you have uh, Better Call Saul, this is Jesse Pinkman 
and of course Walter White from Breaking Bad. Both again sold out. I think a lot of people were asking on Instagram, they were wondering if they're re-releasing these. Again, I think it was just a matter of taking up space in a booth, giant booth at a Comic Con that's otherwise pretty small, but having it more as a portfolio. And I mean, they were drawing a lot of attention, a lot of people taking photos. So they did a great setup and it's fun to see all these. And then of course they had a lot of anime inspired toys on display as well with say Neon Genesis uh, Evangelion, which <laughs> I'm not a fan of that show. I know I, I all hear it in the comments, but yeah, it just doesn't do it for me. And then, uh, yeah, I'll just leave you guys to kind of look at these photos in case I embarrass myself anymore, right? Now, I'll give it to them all day. These Transformers figures were just beautiful. They look fantastic. They look like what really just kind of steps off the screen. So much better in the design than the first couple of Transformers movies. If ultimately they would have gone with more of these type G1 looks for the characters, I think the Transformers franchise would have gone in the other direction, I think. A lot of people, I mean, they're they're loud popcorn blockbusters at this point, but the looks of these just translate so much better as Transformers, whereas, as I'll say all day for those Michael Bay films, uh, they're just like walking scrap pot. You don't really know what you're looking at. They have the instances of Transformers that you know but ultimately, it's like they just took the name and was like, well, we'll just do our own thing without really thinking about how the character designs add to the story and everything else because you're just too busy watching these movies and going, what am I looking at? <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you had like Transformers The Last Night. Again, it's a cool looking design when translated to toys, but the movie version, it's just nonsensical. <laughs> So 3-0 did a good job here with uh, bringing it to life on the screen. But, of course, these are really what I think about with Transformers. Very much Megatron. Very much Optimus Prime. This Optimus Prime, the reds that they used on this, just a eye-popping red to it. And all the battle damage and war-torn looks to them. The shading that they have going on. The airbrushing. It came out looking amazing. So they definitely did a great job with kind of updating the ones that you get from Hasbro to now the 3-0 look. And of course you have poor, poor Starscream, who Starscream's probably, yeah, it is my favorite Transformers character. And what they did in the first Michael Bay film, I was like, oh man. I mean, he had the voice, right? I think it was Charlie Adler that did the voice uh, for Starscream in the first one. Maybe the sequels, but I mean, ultimately, what did it? You got killed by Shia LaBeouf. Nobody wants to get killed by Shia LaBeouf, right? <laughs> Jeez. I actually.
actually really did like this Optimus Prime though from Age of Extinction. I really like those really muted, he looks like an apocalyptic type Optimus Prime. And then in kind of walking around the convention, you know, various highlights, things that I thought were interesting. I know this company, Bates, right here. They they made some Squid Game toys, figures, vinyl, whatever you want to call it. And I absolutely love that show. I can't wait till season two. I thought that was such a great show. One of the only Netflix shows that kind of come to recent memory that I've watched it twice, almost three times now. I really enjoy it but they had various little vinyl figures on display especially of the angry playstation buttons so they look good they're not my thing i i don't even want action figures to be honest with you i mean it's one of those where I'm just, i just really want to enjoy it just for the show <laughs> you know i don't need to go too far with the uh with figures and such but uh jumping on it capitalizing it real quick i mean the show came out what a month and a half two months ago i mean they did a great job and kind of making something fun for uh, younger people or those that like to collect. And you have the Doom bots walking around and then various other booths, which I think I should just be quiet and let you enjoy. this Where's Wally, Where's Waldo figure on display. Where's Wally is the European name, if you want to go that route. Where's Waldo, they changed it for when they brought it over to America. But uh, this is the one sixth scale figure, which looks amazing. It's incredible. It just comes with a ton of accessories. It's a very charming looking figure. I wouldn't mind that. However, after seeing, which you'll see in just a second, the smaller uh, 112 scale where's Wally figure. I did go ahead and pre-order that. So I believe it probably should ship around early 2022, something to that degree, but tons of hands with this guy. The overall, the box, the display of it. It's just very nostalgic. Loved where's Waldo, still like where's Waldo. But yeah, this 112th scale version comes with the dog. Comes with like a book stand. You can. There's actually two different versions. I ordered the more deluxe one with it comes with the book and the stand and everything. But basically, this is just a smaller version of the more cloth goods one sixth scale. So he looks really cool. Oh, actually, you know what? It looks like it says release in the fourth quarter of this year. So maybe December, something like that. But I always say with things <laughs> the way they're shipping right now, look for it early 2022. <music> Bandai, Tamashi Nations, uh, under the Bluefin label, of course. They had a lot of great stuff on display. I do like Gundam. I, I'm a big fan of Gundam Wing because I used to watch it on uh, Cartoon Network and Adult Swim and everything else. Toonami, you know, when they had the Midnight Run. But the, uh, the Gundam, the huge displays, Goku, those are always so much fun. Very Comic-Con. I miss that kind of stuff, you know, kind of seeing all the boots and everything on display of course they had Godzilla and Kong which we've seen revealed I wouldn't say they had too many new reveals but just again much like all the other companies it's fun to be able to go to a comic-con and walk around and just see all the various offerings past and present because when you see it in terms of a collection it just you know 
little thing in here. Oh, I missed that. I gotta go back and get it. I'm a huge fan of these Gundam universe. I pick up the wing ones. I actually just found Heavy Arms. He was at uh, Target. So I believe I'm all caught up as far as Gundam wing figures go so far. That's like a guilty pleasure. I found those every once in a while. Just add them to my collection. So I think what we got Death Scythe, Heavy Arms, Sand Rock, got him too, Tall Geese. Oh, I gotta do a video on that one day. This really cool looking Iron Man. He was on display. He will be releasing sometime in the future, but very much that import look, tech on Avengers, they're calling it. So there's also a Captain America one. Are actually pretty cool. I, I have a few of them. I have Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper with the the drum, but this is their movie realization series, so this will be the Biscar Mando, Grogu, a little top knot in the, the basket, right? You know, from the from the Mandalorian show. I like the details, is jetpack, everything else. This translate, there's just something very cool about a feudal Japan sort of Star Wars uh, motif, right? And then of course you had Dragon Ball Z, which I'll just let this play and not further embarrass myself in terms of my knowledge of DBZ. company flame toys and sentinel and everything else they had a nice display for comic con huge booth in fact and a lot of different glass cases showing off all their figures like the into the spider verse line that they're doing so you have spdr penny parker miles and then of course the upcoming peter b parker which Yes, he is due for December, but again, with how things are shipping, don't be surprised if you see him early 
2022. A lot of people jumped on that when I posted it on Instagram. But I thought, well, okay, we'll see what happens. And then you have these fighting armor Marvel figures. You got Black Panther and Loki. Interesting enough, I like Loki. Kind of looks like a robot Loki. I kind of dig that. So ultimately, if you've made it this far, that kind of does it in terms of toys on display, cool things that I saw walking from one end of the convention to the other. And I really went for, actually it kind of worked out, where I made it to where all the booths, where all the vintage toys were trying to find something to buy. Of course, they had a lot of Ninja Turtles. Uh, in the poly bags. I love when toys are in little bags, but I also love bins. You know, I love digging through 
bins, that was always something I remember when I was a little kid and going to Comic Con, there were always the vendors that had the bins, they'd have little white piece of paper stuck to the front, you know, every, everything in this bin, a buck, every, everything in this one, five bucks, and yeah, you could usually find some cool stuff. Alas, I did not find anything to buy at Comic-Con this year. However, I mean, there were a few things here and there uh, that I would like to have, mostly box stuff, but I have them loose already. A couple Ghostbusters, of course, biker mice from Mars, right? <laughs> Good luck finding a uh, Ghostbusters uh, the Egon right there with a the tie. And of course, you had the poor Quasimodo from the real Ghostbusters Monsters line. There were a couple booths there that they had pretty decent prices. I would say overall, small as it was, they were, you know, of course, you're always going to have the higher upcharge for a convention. Convention prices, right? But I don't think a lot of people were necessarily buying because of that, and I mean, to be quite honest with you, foot traffic was very light. This was a very empty San Diego Comic-Con. One that I have not seen for years and years, for as many years as I have been going. This was empty, but again, kind of nice at the same time and not having to bump around people, except for taking uh, photos at the booths, of course. <laughs> People kept walking into the shot. You know, it's not their fault. They're just trying to enjoy a convention. I'm the weirdo taking photos, right? But these are cool. There's a bunch of bootleg He-Man figures and some Ninja Turtles. That was always fun to see. I was actually thinking about those Ninja Turtles. But again, you got to focus on your collections, right? You can't always start something new. Finding any type of bin, scrounging around, digging through all kinds of different uh, toys can't beat it. It's just one of my favorite things of going to a convention. Now this was actually a lot of fun to kind of take photos and go through their booth. These were just all devoted to old trading cards and Nintendo game packs. Things that I have not seen for years. I mean, I remember, I think it was, had it been Save On? Something, something like that. And of course, you know, various comic book shops, but just kind of going in, seeing all the, all the, you know, oh, you get a piece of bubble gum with a pack of cards. And, Donkey Kong, Grease, <laughs> Knight Rider, 30 cents for each pack. Now they want 175 bucks a box. I mean, geez, I wish I would have had some of those, right? But yeah, this was a highlight to me, really seeing all these old trading cards. That was a lot of fun, seeing how many different brands had trading cards, some of which I was like, oh, really? I didn't know that. That's actually really awesome to see and you can see wall to wall but uh, if you're interested this is uh, Mark's non sports cards which is the perfect name right for all us nerds that you know no sport is yeah, sports right no I'm just kidding go out and play sports gargoyles those are the cards they had on display spider-man Hulk Ninja Turtles which I still have mine Star Wars Rocky 2 <laughs> the Goonies Simpsons Marvel Universe of course that was a big one Ghostbusters 2 Batman, 21 Jump Street, that's one that I would never have said had a uh, had its own trading cards, of course. I kind of wish they would come back in some sense, more so than they are. A lot of the cards nowadays, I think of like, oh, it's Pokemon or something like that. But I mean, even like Alien, they had those, Return of the Jedi, Superman, Alf, Alf's back, 
NECA's bringing ALF, remember that? Monster in my pocket, now that was a cool set. New Kids on the Block, Elvis. And of course you got that Yo-Yo MTV Raps, right? 50 new cards. <laughs> Fangoria, Adam's Family. I could go on and on. This was a blast to just kind of see all the different trading cards that they had on display. So if you get a chance, go hit up Mark's non-sports cards. This was sitting at the top of one of the booths right there, a boxed flip and trap play set. Uh, I have one loose, of course, but I'm missing a piece. So I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I just buy that. You know, I can just buy it, whatever. Anytime I walk up to a booth and I see like old packaged toy biz figures, play sets, anything like that, like the Danger Room ones, which I have, I actually have the boxes, so that's always good to see, something uh, I don't have to buy, thank god. I was actually looking for Power of the Force figures, imagine this, going to a comic convention and I could not find any Power of the Force, I'm talking about like the uh, 1990s uh, Power of the Force, couldn't find anything. <laughs> I'm not looking for much. But, uh, you know, couldn't find anything Power of the Force. And then these were fun. I remember these things. These were the couch potatoes. Uh, creepy looking, right? I haven't seen these for years and years, but I distinctly remember the faces and the odd packaging on them. And then one of the guys, they had the, uh, the pocket comics, right? So actually, I'll have a look at the uh, overseas Spider-Man the Animated Series, like the true Spider-Man the Animated Series ones coming up for retro shoes, but again, it's always really cool to see these old X-Men ones right here, especially the Cerebro one, Cerebro Room, which is uh, actually kind of uh, hard to come by, to be honest. They had a ton, I noticed this, a lot of the booths had bags or just displays of Marvel Legend figures on sale, and of course, you know, everyone's favorite Marvel Legend, Shazam, right there, right? <laughs> You got the Red Hood from Multiverse, Mattel, that kind of stuff. Uh, Punisher. I went through all of these. Again, it's, like, you know, you have all of them, so not much to really grab or buy, but still fun to see. You know, a lot of chance you find one, you're like, oh, I totally need that character, right? <laughs> And then I kind of laughed myself because I was like, I know what this, uh, how big this is, <laughs> how bulky it is to carry it. The, uh, the only booth I saw that had a uh, Sentinel on the display for sale, it was cool. This I had to do a double take, thought this was a statue, this is the guy in a Batman suit, very well done there. A lot of old Transformers, like a big box of Transformers magazines, uh, which was very cool to see, kind of went through those, a lot of duplicates of course. but. I wish they weren't like in a box like bent up like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the kind of thing where you go, yeah.
And then at the very back end, the opposite side of the convention from which I entered, they had the Funko area, which was going off. So that's really going to wrap it up for my look at this year's San Diego Comic-Con 2021 Special Edition. Thank you so much for watching. I did enjoy the one day I was there, just a few hours. Not too crazy, not too wild, not too much to do, to be quite honest with you. So, fingers crossed things get back into position and we're just all ready to rock and roll for Comic-Con Summer Edition, the true edition, 2022. And I hope to see you guys all there. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I will talk to you soon. Adios.